Today, I continue the journey of Inric and his rise to fame in the most strategic action RPG out there. I played 200 days of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Check out the first 100 days if you haven't already. Link down below. The siege equipment took a full two days to construct, and once it was finished, all of our 900 plus Flandian troops began to storm the castle. I myself was on the front line. It was dangerous, but I knew it had to be done. I rushed right to the front of the castle and started taking out some of the enemy archers. The less arrows being shot into my army was a good thing. Unfortunately, the enemy siege defenses had a catapult, and a single shot from that catapult went straight into the bulk of my army. It took out a significant amount of men. Finally, after what seemed like forever, our battering ram had made it to the front gate of the castle. It started battering away at the gate until it finally collapsed. Right at that moment, our troops poured in to the little airlock between gates 1 and 2. There was even an area above where the enemies could throw rocks down at us. Fortunately for my team, the rest of our allies had already made it into the castle by scaling the walls. They opened the gate and we flooded right in to the little enemies that remained. The battle ended right at that moment. We had seized control of the entire outer walls of the castle. Afterwards, I got a decent amount of loot from the battlefield and I headed back into Imperial lands to recruit some troops. The newly claimed Vlandian villages were exhausted of people, so I didn't even try to head over there to recruit. I then made my way back over to the new Asari Vlandian border and I noticed a large army getting ready for another siege. I of course joined them. Just like in the first one, the siege preparations were taking quite a while. That was when a huge army of 576 Asari troops pulled up. 344 more came and I knew that it was time to skedaddle. The castle troops plus the new armies would be way too much for the Vlandian army to take on. Surprisingly enough, it looked like the Vlandians were doing a good job sustaining. I went back because they needed me. When I assessed what the outcome of the battle would be if my troops were to also join in, I noticed that things looked a lot more even. I was only a paid mercenary for the Vlandian kingdom, but I felt that it was my duty to at least try and help. Arrows came raining in as I charged the enemy horse archers. The enemy infantrymen were so far up that their whole backline was open. I was able to just glide past them taking out a whole bunch of archers on the way. I looped around and made my way to the front line of the battle to assist my infantrymen. After quite a while, my team prevailed. We hunted down all of the enemies who tried to flee the battle and their fate was set in stone. Everything wrapped up and I was able to take an enemy general as prisoner. I had taken a few other prisoners as well. There was a lot of loot from this battle that I planned on selling. I noticed the enemies took control of the same castle we had taken previously. So I headed back over there as things were under control at the current castle siege. Only 35? I don't even need my help. Easily enough, we gained control of the castle. I then started to make my way back to Imperial lands to sell off some loot. That was when I realized I was on the tail of a caravan that I could raid. Of course, that's exactly what I did. Being the brave soul that I am, I immediately rushed into the enemy cavalry. I planned on taking out as many troops as I could before I sent my army in. This way things would go a lot smoother. Wow, I'm surprised that actually worked out. I immediately snatched all of the juicy loot that I could, and I made my way over to the nearest Imperial City to sell it off. I made sure to upgrade any pieces of armor for me and any companions if they were better than what we currently had. All of the loot sold for around 23,000 dinars. This was epic. I ended up meeting a random brewer in the city. His name was Geminon. I paid him a lot of dinars to set up a caravan and one that was safe 
so that way I could make profit off of it. While heading back into the Asar Islands, I noticed a caravan going by. I also noticed a little peninsula that it ran past. This could be a good trapping point in the future for more caravans. When I returned to the border, surely enough there was no shortage of action. I first met up with some allies to handle the enemies trying to siege one of our castles. I then headed over to assist in sieging a castle. Yep, this is going to be easy. Even though we outnumbered the enemies a significant amount, this castle siege needed to be taken seriously because a lot of my troops' lives were on the line. I ran the same strat as one of the castle sieges before and ran up to the castle walls taking out some of the archers from close range. The battering ram got battering away and we were quickly into the airlock. I nearly lost my life when an enemy threw a giant boulder right next to me. Luckily I was backing up in the nick of time. The gate was about ready to break, so I backed up a little bit and got my horse into a charging position. Right when it broke open, I charged and tried to make my way right past all of the guards who were defending the gate and made it past the enemy's defenses. I jabbed at the enemy's back end and tried to disrupt their lines as much as possible so my troops could squeeze right past them. After applying constant pressure and enough ramming with my horse, I ended up breaking the line a little bit and my troops started to pour in. We chased down the remaining enemies and then surrounded the enemies on the castle walls. They had nowhere to run except into us. Another castle siege was in the books and I had sold all the loot that I got from it in the same castle that we had just captured. I made my way deeper into the Asari lands with one of the big Vlandian armies. Once there, I was able to lure a small army of 80 troops into the bigger Vlandian army. We easily melted them. We then started to do a castle siege on yet another castle. This one was easily won, and I was able to head back right to the city that we had sieged beforehand and sell my loot. On the way there, I was acquainted by this random Asari general who was trying to take me out. Luckily enough, King Durhurt rode past me with a large army. He scared off the Asari general. I decided not to sell my loot at the specific city that we had just taken. I decided that I could sell my loot on the way to the Vlandian lands, as I was going to go there to look for a wife. I noticed that there were these two caravans trailing not too far behind me. I was able to trap both of them into the peninsula area I talked about earlier, and I caught the one with 39 troops. This was an easy battle, and I was about to get really good loot from it. I then started chasing the caravan with 50 troops, but they ended up being able to escape. Stupidly enough, they turned back and started to trail me again. I trapped them in the peninsula and ended up taking them on to get their loot. Even though we were only taking on a caravan, the enemies did outnumber us, so I had to take precautions. I went ahead and took out as many cavalry units as I could. I then told my troops to engage. Things went according to plan and we got all of the goods that the caravan had. My party couldn't hold any more loot and we were over encumbered. So we had to head to the nearest city to sell off all of that caravan loot. I got around 14,000 dinars from it. Before I headed off on my journey, I assigned perks and learning points into my skills. The journey had no obstacles and it was actually a very smooth one. When I returned to the homelands, I recruited some troops and headed to the nearby castle of Sargat. I talked to a noblewoman named Ellis in the Lord's Hall. I told her that I wished to be one of her admirers and tried to talk to her and see how things would work out between us. She seemed very flattered and agreed to meet up with me again in the future. I then did what any other logical person would do and headed to the next city to talk to another noblewoman named Sylvan. She too was very impressed with me, and I was quite impressed with her. I definitely felt the spark. Once again, I moved on to the next castle, looking for another potential mate. Unfortunately, I didn't find anyone, so I moved on to the next one. I ended up finding another noblewoman named Adelindis who was looking to get married. So, I talked to her, and things were going well. That was until the end of the conversation. Things didn't really work out, and we didn't have a lot in common. 
I had my eyes on Sylvan. She seemed the most compatible and also had a lot of really good skills that she could bring to the table. In the meantime, while I gave the lady some time to think, I told Nogan to start his own party. It was pretty cool seeing two parties on the map with the Vortide flag. This meant that our reputation and clan was growing. I gave Nogan some guidance and protection while he built up his army. I also limited the amount of money he could spend on wages every single day. I had done enough fooling around in my homelands, so I decided that it was time to head back out to war. This time I was coming a little bit more prepared with better troops. I went deep into the Astari lands and saw a whole Vlandian army get completely exterminated. This was bad, and it now looked like a lot of the Astari troops were chasing me. Why are there so many people chasing me? What the heck? I was able to lead a bunch of the Astari parties into a bunch of my Vlandian armies. This created a lot more of a fair fight and one that I could actually win. As usual, I deployed my normal tactics of hitting the back lines and also taking out as many cavalry as I could. This was a little bit intimidating because the enemy army was huge, and I was in the middle of it. After the main forces collided, there weren't too many troops left on either side, things were still about even. It looked like the battle could go either way, but I had to ensure that we won this. I tried my best to keep taking out as many troops as I could despite having a million arrows lodged into me. Thankfully, we barely won the battle. I refer to this battle as the Battle of Arrows because of all of the arrows that were stuck in my armor and in me. I headed to the usual loot selling city and I ended up with around 19,000 dinars worth of loot. I sold it and got my money. I then made my journey back into the Vlandian homelands with the story of the great battle that I had just fought in. I immediately talked to Alice and tried to impress her with my journey. Unfortunately, it didn't work out, and she wasn't that impressed. So we cut things off. I feared that I was going to bottle things with Sylvan, so I decided to gain more renown before attempting to talk to her. Randomly, a courier approached me and delivered the news that the Vlandian people declared war on the Sturgeon people. Soon after, another courier found me and told me the news that the Vlandian people and the Astari people made peace. This was going to be a whole new war against a whole new faction. I came across a castle that looked like I would possibly be able to capture. I knew if I wanted to impress Sylvan, this would be a way to do so. I then recruited a whole bunch of horsemen and headed out to a few castles to see if I could woo any other ladies. As I headed near the Sturgeon Vlandian border, I noticed that there was a huge siege going on, with around 1.2 thousand Sturgeon troops trying to take a Vlandian castle. This actually ended up being a good thing, and you'll see why later on in my journey. I snuck past the giant Sturgeon army. I was hoping to find some straggling parties that I could take care of in the Sturgeon lands. Unfortunately, it seemed like all of their troops were a part of that main army. When I headed back towards the same castle that had just been captured, there was a Vlandian army taking back the castle. I of course joined them. We captured the castle, regrouped with another Vlandian army, and I lured some troops into fighting those armies. This resulted in some good loot and put the Vlandian nation in a good position as they were technically starting to win the war. We started to begin a siege on the castle that I wanted to capture which made me sad. I then noticed that there was a giant Sturgeon army approaching us. I quickly got out of there as fast as I could, but it looked like my allies didn't do the same, and I don't know why they stayed. My allies army was getting destroyed, and there was nothing that I could do about it. Unfortunately, if I tried to join in the fight, I would definitely go down with them. The giant Sturgeon party that had just eliminated one of my allies' parties was now tailing me. They ended up going to the castle that we had just retaken from them, and they started to siege it. King Derhurt tried raising a bunch of troops nearby to try and contest the castle siege. 
Unfortunately, the Sturgeon army took the castle before we were able to do anything. Don't even ask me how we got in this situation, but King Durhard and I were now being tailed by the 1,100 men. I was able to slip past them and kind of stay behind. King Durhard, on the other hand, led his troops directly into a trap. He cornered himself, and the battle began between the two parties, and things were not looking good for the Vlandians. I went to assess the odds who would win. Unfortunately, things were not looking good for the Vlandians. I decided that it would be best if I just had left the area. On the way out, another 300 Sturgeon troops arrived. It looked like more Vlandian armies were coming to assist, but I didn't know if this was going to do anything. It seemed like we were still outnumbered a significant amount. I tried to lure the enemies into a fight. Things ended up not working out. I got very close, but I was afraid that I was going to engage them by myself. Luckily enough, I was able to catch the enemies just in time, and we had the numbers advantage. Once we won the battle, I got thanks from one of the Vlandian leaders. We were able to take out one army, but there was still an army with over 900 troops that needed to be dealt with. We needed to be smart if we wanted to take out this giant party. Unfortunately, the Vlandian nobles did exactly the opposite. They got themselves killed. The Sturgeons were pushing further into our lands, and that was when it happened. The enemy army broke up. I'm assuming they weren't able to sustain being in such a large party for so long. Now was our time. I first picked off an enemy army that had only 50 troops. I then started chasing after some of the other armies and got one with 76 troops. We were taking out all of the small parties and it was quite effective because since they weren't in a large number, they weren't able to win any of the battles. And taking out 100 at a time is a lot easier than taking out 900 at a time. When the moment was right and the Sturgeon and Vlandian forces were both distracted with each other, I decided that it was time to end my mercenary contract. I then headed straight to a Sturgeon village and started to raid it. This way the Sturgeons would declare war on me and I could finally take the castle that I had been dreaming of. Right once we finished raiding the village, I headed over to the castle of Neviansk. I started my very first siege alone. I then upgraded all of my troops to make sure that we had the manpower to take on this castle. With the Sturgeons being so distracted by the Vlandians, they didn't even bat an eye to my siege. The invasion began. My strategy to take this castle was to just rush the walls with ladders as fast as we possibly could. This way the troops wouldn't even be organized and in position to be able to defend the castle by the time that we were inside of it. Call me smart or whatever you want to call me, but I was able to get my troops directly into the castle before a lot of the enemies even made it onto their own walls. In addition to my brilliant plan, I grabbed some of the ammunition from where the catapults were and it happened to be explosive. I threw this off the walls right into big groups of enemies. I was taking 5-6 to six of the enemy troops out with a single throw. This was overpowered. Luckily I did this because it honestly changed the tides of the battle. After I had inflicted as much damage as I could with the bombs, I went, grabbed a sword, and headed to the inner walls. A small detachment of my troops and I made it to the front gate where we took out any remaining defenders. We then were able to open the gates and let the rest of my forces into the castle, sealing the fate of the battle. I saved some troops from the dungeon and brought them into my own army. My party was now at 128 out of 117. I couldn't handle managing this many troops, so I added them to the garrison of my newly taken castle. This way, if it ever went under siege, there would be extra defenders in here. Well, I did it. I finally owned my own castle. In under 200 days, I went from rags to owning my very own castle. There was even a castle management screen where I could construct projects. For example, my trading fields were currently being upgraded to the next tier. I didn't have much time to celebrate because I was still at war. So I headed out and found a Sturgeon party with 62 members only. I talked to them and see what it would take for our nations to make peace. Well, I guess my clan and their nation. Unfortunately for this noblewoman, it was going to cost a lot. 
and there was no way I was paying that money when I was winning the war. With ease, we took care of the Sturgeon party. I then headed to a Batanian city and sold off all of my loot for 44,000 dinars. I then headed to another city to look for a companion to govern my castle. Even when I'm not there, I need someone running things and making sure that they're going smoothly. Once the whole castle scenario was taken care of, I headed back to another Sturgeon castle, but unfortunately a Vlandian army sieged it and took control of it. I picked off any stragglers nearby of the Sturgeon army after trying to see if they would be willing to negotiate for a cheaper piece. I started to have a whole bunch of extra loot in my party that was weighing us down. So I headed to the castle and I deposited in the chest room all of the extra loot that I didn't need. This was a smart thing to do because I was now moving a lot quicker. A Sturgeon army with over 600 troops was marching towards my castle. I was getting a bit nervous because I knew that they were going to try and take it back. I upgraded all of my perks that I could, and then I sent my younger sister out as an envoy to develop her stewardship skills. One piece of advice that I gave her was to never let her guard down, which also increased her tactics. Out of nowhere, it seemed like the Sturgeon army had just decided not to attack my castle. I was pretty grateful, but I was also a bit confused, so I headed out to try and investigate. Before I knew it, they started chasing me back right to my castle, and it seemed like it was just a trap to lure me out. I made it back inside my castle, and I upgraded as many troops as I possibly could because this was going to be a hard siege. My troops got to work building anti-siege equipment, and the enemies built their siege camp. There was a point in time when the enemies let their guard down, and I took a little detachment of soldiers and headed out to try and sabotage the enemy's siege equipment. Things were going well. I took out a lot of the enemy troops in small detachments rather than having to deal with them as a large army. This was a pretty good idea, and we even got to mess around with some other siege equipment. My party did as much damage as they could, and then we started to retreat heading back inside of the castle as more and more enemies started to pour out of the siege camp. The invasion was going to begin. It appears that this little ambush I had ended up making the enemies want to invade as soon as possible. So there were two little areas with ladders as well as a battering ram that we had to take care of. I set up swordsmen in front of the areas with the ladders and I set up archers near our catapults and along the walls. I myself headed up to the tower where I was doing a lot of damage when we were sieging this castle. I knew the only way that we could win this battle was if we took out the battering ram and took out as many troops as I could with the catapult. I hopped on it and waited for my troops to load it up with the explosive ammunition. My first shot was a direct hit on the battering ram, which was a good sign. My second shot was into a huge group of soldiers, killing quite a few. We destroyed the enemy battering ram by pelting it with a lot of explosive ammunition. The enemy troops then had no other choice but to go to the ladders. This was a good thing as I was able to throw explosive ammunition from the catapults down right onto them, taking out several enemies at a time. I took out my trusty crossbow and started picking off enemies climbing up the ladder. This way there'd be a lot less pressure on the guards defending the wall. Before we knew it, the enemies were retreating. They weren't going to win this battle, so it looked like they were going to try and regroup, and then try again. Sure enough, they were constructing more siege equipment, which I was able to ambush, and I brought out quite a few troops to go ahead and take out any of the enemies that tried to stop us. This time the strategy was different. I had my infantrymen line up right next to the catapult and form a shield wall. I also had my cavalry just start running around and take out any stragglers. The idea of this was to have the enemies run right into our infantrymen, and then the cavalry would ambush from behind. This strategy worked exactly as planned, and it seemed like the enemies were very preoccupied with the infantrymen, and they didn't even really worry about the horsemen. We had taken out so many enemies that they had to retreat and launch their full-scale siege now, otherwise they wouldn't have enough men if they kept sending them out to try and fight us. The second siege of Neviansk began. I set up our defensive positions the same way that the castle was defended the first time. The only difference was that I was going to be manning a ballista. Wow, this thing is incredibly accurate. 
After using all the ranged defenses that we could, the enemies decided that it was time to retreat. They were losing way too many troops and gaining no ground. There was a decent amount of injured troops still left on the enemy side. So I sallied out with all of my troops and we met them in a battlefield to try and fight. A lot of the enemy troops were wounded and were still trying to recover from the siege, so I felt that this was going to be an easy battle despite being outnumbered. As usual, I went ahead and dealt with as much cavalry as I could. This ended up being super effective and I was able to take out most of the enemy's horsemen. They didn't really have any left which was pretty crazy. I then had all my horsemen follow me and charge into the side of the enemy lines. Sadly, this wasn't very effective. I came up with a new idea of sending in my infantrymen and crossbowmen and just had them all out attack. While the enemies were distracted by the infantrymen, I had the horsemen go all the way to the top of the hill and then charge at the very last second before the lines collided. This attacking maneuver was probably the best thing that I could have done and it resulted in very minimal deaths for my own troops. My party looted a lot of items from the enemies. They did have over 600 troops after all. I then headed to the nearest Batanian city where I was before and sold off all of the loot that I could. I also had quite a few skills that I needed to put perks into. Obviously I did take on a lot of troops after all and successfully beat them. I got a little nervous because I saw another Sturgeon army with over 400 troops. It looked like they were massing at this location. I knew a lot more little groups were going to be rallying to join the big army. So I went in between the camp of the large army and their homeland. Sure enough, I caught a party of only 100 troops. They were light work. After that easy little battle, I upgraded some of my own troops to make sure that they were going to be ready for the siege. I also headed back to my castle to prepare defenses. After waiting quite a long time, nobody showed. I was super confused as they definitely had the numbers to try and attack my castle again. So I went to go see what was going on. And on the way, I saw the giant party. I then even saw a bigger Vlandian party come by, which scared away the Sturgeons. I tried to see where that large Sturgeon army went. They were nowhere to be spotted. I knew with the Vlandians nearby, they'd keep the Sturgeons at bay. So, I headed off into my homelands. The Vlandian homelands. I only had one thing on my mind. Sylvan. Now that I owned a castle, I knew that she'd be impressed. Unfortunately, after traveling to the last city that I saw her in, she wasn't there. So I asked around and found out that she was at the castle of Ox Hall. This was pretty cool because it was closer to my place, but I did just waste a lot of time traveling to the city of Gelland. When I arrived, I immediately went to the Lord's Hall and had a conversation with her. It was very successful and she agreed to marry me. The only issue was I had to get permission from the head of her house. I asked where I'd be able to find the head of her clan and she told me it was in a nearby city. I headed directly over there and made a proposal with a decent amount of dinars. It was successful. On the seventh day of autumn, 1086, that was when the whole ceremony happened. We were now officially married. I brought Sylvan back to the area where I had my castle. I wanted to show it off. This was also going to be the new homeland for our clan, so it would be best that we both got acquainted to it. I started to patrol the area and was acting like a police. I took out any random raiders and made sure that they wouldn't stick around here ever again. I headed into the Sturgeon lands to see what was going on. They weren't bothering me lately. I saw some Batanians fighting them, so it looked like now Batania and Vlandia were at war with the Sturgeons. I helped the Batanian party fight off the Sturgeons. We won, obviously. I continued exploring the Sturgeon lands. That's when I saw two huge armies heading towards my area. This was not going to be good. The Batanians were also sieging a castle, so I'm sure they would make a stop there first. What do you know? They did, and now I'm involved in this. <laughs> 